We've been diving deep on the biblical concept of grace, and today we're going to talk about what grace looks like to a graceless world. We're going to talk about how Christians should apply grace outside the church. Now, as a people whose central message is God's grace, we should interact with a skeptical world in a way that reflects grace in all we do and what we say and how we say it. Barna Group did a study on the differences in perceptions of evangelicals across political ideology. In particular, they looked at those who said they were mostly conservative versus those who said they were mostly liberal. Check out some of the things that the mostly liberal people thought about evangelicals. Only 12% of them thought evangelicals were hopeful compared to 36% of the conservative people who thought evangelicals were hopeful. Or what about narrow-mindedness? Almost 50% of the liberal respondents considered evangelicals narrow-minded, compared to an 8% mark given by the mostly conservative respondents. Spend a little time digesting some of these statistics, and these stats might be even more alarming. When non-Christians were asked about their overall perception of evangelicals, only 1% were very positive, compared to 20% who were very negative toward evangelicals. If you zoom out a little bit, non-Christians were more negative than they were even neutral when it comes to their overall perception of evangelicals. Now, if those statistics are even anywhere close to accurate, Christians, we have some work to do. So here's the first tip. Speak with grace to those who don't know God. You won't win people to a message of grace by using methods that are anti-grace. Paul said this to the church at Colossae, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Verse six, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. The Greek there for attractive is seasoned with salt. Make sure that your conversation is palatable for the people who don't have your same worldview. The Apostle Peter said it like this in 1 Peter 3, verses 15 and 16. If someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But verse 16, he says, do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. Then if people speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Now, how different is this than the way a lot of Christians act out in public? Sometimes in our eagerness to get across our message, we don't speak in a gentle and respectful way. And yet when we do that, we're going against the word of God. On a practical level, we're actually misrepresenting the message of grace by which we stand because our methods are anti-grace. So people can't see the grace message of Jesus when they look at us. The truth is we need to treat people with grace even if they don't follow God, maybe especially if they don't follow God. As Christians, we're called to share the good news. We're not called to rant about how people ought to live. Jesus himself taught it like this, Matthew 5, But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. And that way you'll be acting as true children of your Father in heaven, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. What Jesus is saying here is that even God himself is kind and gracious to those who disagree with him or who are against him. And if God gives sunlight to both the evil and the good, we should be respectful and kind to both the evil and the good. The truth is, it's the Holy Spirit's job to correct people's lifestyle. Our job as Christians is to live in a way that points people to Jesus. Jesus said this in John 16, 8, when the Spirit comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. So brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not your job to convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and the coming judgment. That's the Holy Spirit's job. Our job is described here in Matthew 5, 16, Jesus himself, in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that Everyone will praise your heavenly father. And that is what will point people to Jesus because the character and nature of God the father is defined by grace. 
God is a gracious, gift-giving God. And it's a good thing he is because we're sinners who need his grace as well. So let's extend that grace to the people all around us and invite them to pursue the God who is graciously pursuing us.